you may be seated. On behalf of Dad Bishop Gordon, Pastor Dexter Gordon, and the rest of the family, we welcome you here to our Bethel Church on this sad but momentous occasion. We're so touched by so many that have come from so far. Many of you that have known her for many, many years. It's good to see friends and family here that have known her for 30 plus years. They meant a lot to us, those that were able to be here last night and those that are here today. We're here to honor the life and legacy of Mom Doreen Gordon. You know, when I walked in this church this past Sunday morning, for the first time and looked at this front row here to the left in that second seat, and mom was not sitting there. It was very jarring to me because for all these years, the one that you can count, even when her body was frail and sick, she would be in the house of the Lord. I felt like the Lord spoke to me in that moment and said, life is but a vapor. Because the strange thing about it, even though I could not physically see mom sitting in that chair, for some reason I felt she was still here. I was missing her, but then I wasn't missing her. And the rest of the day, that scripture was in my mind, said, life is but a vapor. So I went home and I looked up the definition of the word vapor. And the dictionary says a vapor is a substance that is suspended in the air. I feel like the reason the Lord spoke to me and said, life is but a vapor. That the body of mom is going back to the dust that all of us will one day have to face, but the essence of mom, the life of mom, and what mom really meant to all of us is still in the air. Her wisdom, her legacy, her example, her prayers, the many Bible studies she taught, everyone here that was impacted by her life. I just want to remind you that she may not be with us physically as we would like her to be, the Bible says there's a vapor of her that's still here. And we can feel her presence. We can feel her love and how much she had for all of us. So today to the family, just want to remind you that we take from us going forward who mom really was. Not just the shell that God allowed her to be in, how beautiful it was. But the essence of mom was a lot more than that. And so today, we're honored by your presence of being here. We thank you for joining us, and we're going to have a great day remembering the life and legacy of Doreen Gordon. Why don't we stand to our feet right now, and why don't we just lift our hands to the Lord and give God praise for a great woman of God, a great legacy. Can we do that? And won't you do me a favor and open your mouth and just give God a great big praise right now. I believe she would have wanted that. Would you open your mouth and give God glory for her, for her life that she lived. We're here to celebrate a life well lived today. Come on, somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Pastor Clifton Thornton is coming at this time to pray. Would you grab any by the hand right now? Flesh, Lord God, we mourn, but our spirits rejoice. Thank you, O oh Lord, for giving us the time to share with a blessed angel. Lord God, a pillar of example of light, a beacon, O oh Lord God. Lord, for you have called her for a time such as this, and she has fulfilled her purpose. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have anointed such a powerful woman of God 
and decided to escort her home. God, and as the gates of heaven, God, we ask that you pour down your strength and your power and your comfort and your glory and fill this house, Lord God. Turn our sadness into gladness. Lord God, and we thank you right now that all of heaven is rejoicing. Lord God, and we feel your presence in the house. Dispatch your angels now and fill this house, oh Lord God. Lord God, as we welcome, Lord God, your daughter home right now. Lord God, for you said, as it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth, Lord. Lord God, and we ask you right now, Lord God, to pour out your peace and your love and your joy and your comfort and your strength right now. And we thank you for what this celebration of life, Lord God, uh, and we welcome you into this house, Lord. Uh, oh God, and I ask that you shadow us now, Lord God. Hide us in the cleft of the rock, oh Lord God. Uh, Lord God, let us abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, and we thank you now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hall Come on, let's clap our hands unto the Lord today. Amen. We're going to sing a little bit. Is that all right? We're going to do it the way that Lady Gordon would like for us to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. It goes like this. What do you want the Lord to say? Just a little while, just a little come on. while to 
shine After a while the clouds will pass over And we'll shout hallelujah
and also verses 37 to 39. And it reads, who shall separate? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness of peril or sword? <clears throat> Verse 37 says, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. That's all right. Put your hands together for the word of the Lord. We have the distinct honor of having in our presence tonight the Florida District Superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church, Bishop Steve Boyd. Would you put your hands together and help me welcome as we come this time. God bless you and you can be seated. On behalf of the ministers of the Florida District United Pentecostal Church International, sincere condolences to Bishop Norris Gordon and his family, whom we all love and cherish. It's not hard to love the Gordon family. It's hard to resist their love. It's not hard to respect them. Their lives speak for themselves. I want to also give honor to this entire church family, El Bethel Church. And we want you to know that from the very moment that that we received news of Sister Gordon's passing, that many prayers have been offered on your behalf. And so the peace thing has not been any indifference, but it has been the sustaining prayers of the saints of God. And to be sure, there is an empty place in your heart, in your home, as it has already been mentioned, an empty place in this local assembly. Although aware of dealing with some health issues, um, through the past several months, Sister Gordon, we know uh, my wife and I were speaking about the last time that we were here, that um, I believe that day she had gotten out of the hospital and made her way to the house of God. It was incredible that she was the immeasurable pain and suffering, but she wanted to be in the house of God. Not only to worship the Lord, but aren't you thankful for the wonderful examples of people who just keep pressing forward and leaning in. And so although aware of some health conditions, there's nothing that can fully prepare you for the finality of losing someone so special. In our humanity, we struggle to speak of someone like Sister Gordon in the past tense. And it's not because we're in denial, but it's because they have always been so very present with us. It's difficult to speak of them in the past. As I survey this great host of people that have gathered here today, I'm reminded of a powerful central truth. And it was God who gave us this tremendous gift called family. It was his idea. It was God who also gave us the church family, that too, his idea. God believed so much in family that he laid down his life for it and speaks often of it in his word, the ability and the strength and the stability that come to us. He did this so that we would not just have life but have a more abundant life here on this earth. And God knew our human weakness and he proactively did something to help offset the struggles that we would face. It was almost as though the Lord said, I'm going to give you a family so that when you hurt, they will be able to put their arms around you. And I'll give you the ability to share comforting words with one another. And in doing so, that will have the gift of neutralizing that hurt at the moment. The Lord didn't just stop by giving us a natural family, but he also gave us a church family. 
And that, in addition to the bond of this Gordon family. Bishop and Pastor Gordon and your family members, it's the church family that has the ability to stand on the peripheral edge of your storm. They can stand outside, not feeling the exact winds that you're feeling. And in doing so, they can pray prayers of intercession like we don't have the ability to pray sometimes for ourselves. We're feeling the weight. We're dealing with life's blows. We're trying to figure out what the next step would be. But God has aligned somebody around us that can family that can stand beside you and lift you up in prayer when we're hurting, broken, and when we have been tried to our very human limit. When life seems unfair and your brokenness seems immeasurable, this is where the beauty of the church family seems to shine brightest. This body of believers never doubt will roll out of bed at a midnight hour at the slightest prompting of his spirit. And it's from this vantage point they will petition heaven on your behalf. And when they begin to pray, comfort will come. In 1 Samuel 25 and 29, it was as the existence of our time here on earth with just four simple words. She referred to it as the bundle of life. And it is just that. It is a bundle. It's good and bad. It's beauty and ugly. It's strength and weakness. And they're all uniquely woven together. But you can't have one without the other. And so it's with the help of God that we have the ability and the confidence to reach out and embrace the whole so that we can enjoy the priceless nuggets that we call memories, abundant supply of memories. We see evidence of that this morning. Emotions are everywhere. There's times and moments of true sorrow and tears and also moments of absolute praise and worship and thanksgiving. We have this great hurt and in times almost chaotic pain. Yet on the heels of that pain, sweet memories and precious memories flood our heart and our minds. Bound up in some of those memories are smiles and, and laughters because indeed life is, as Abigail said, a bundle. One moment, a moment, a moment, we find ourselves broken again. However, I'm going to tell you one unchanging thing. And that's when the Holy Ghost moves in and he comforts our hearts. That is the salve, that healing balm of Gilead that will keep us when nothing else will. And I will close with these words. In 1922, a lady by the name of Helen Lemuel penned a few words that seemed to capture the answer to so many of life's disappointments. She simply said this in a chorus of a song that she penned. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full into his wonderful face and the things of earth light of his glory and grace. So Bishop Gordon and family, may God richly bless you and strengthen you and thank you for the privilege that you've given me to participate today. God bless you. Thank you, Bishop Boyd. We'll now receive reflections from a few individuals, and we ask that you come one behind the other in the order on your program. And um, if you're going to be speaking next, please stand um, to my left of the platform. We're asking everyone to try to stay within two minutes. Everybody say two minutes. All right, I've been sent from New York to keep things in order here today. That's a Woodlock Reed, Francis Christian Augustine, Reverend Frederick and Claudette Garrick, Dr. Barbara Sharp, Dr. James and Valerie Wilkinson. Put your hands together as they come. Bless the Lord, I tell you. You know, I spoke.
this last night for a little bit for two or three minutes. <laughs> and I didn't want to come up. If you want to know, you never have too much to say about Lady God. You never have too much to say about her. You know, we've been young together in New York, and we get old together in Florida. Yes, she encouraged me to come to Florida, and here I am. I'm here in Florida because I only know two people. I know one Miss Clover, and I know one Miss Doreen. And she invited me to come to Florida, and here I am. I just want to say, I can tell you how the grief I had or feel. I said, you know, Audrey, Miss Doreen is gone, like how they call her. And I said, she's, I said, I don't think I have any more tears. And while I was telling her I have no more tears, the tears was running down. So I said, it's not all gone, it's still here. <laughs> you know, but I just, I just said, Lord, Help me, you got to help me. You got to help me to get over this. The Canadi Garden, is she, that's the carcasses there right now. Our spirit is gone on to glory. Hallelujah, Moshe Kadama. Hallelujah, Moshe. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. And I just thank God for her. I thank God for her. And I thank God for her and may our soul, may our soul, this will never ever leave my mind. Believe me, she will not leave my mind. Uh, she's just gone on before us or before me. But I tell you, I love her. I love the Gordon families. My grandma is there sitting down. I love grandma. I love, I love the family, period. And I just want to thank, when I, when I come in this morning and I see all these cars, I say, my God, this is a dignitary. But you know something? She's dignitary for Jesus Christ. And I love her and I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First, I must um, offer my condolences to Norris, the Gordon family, and they all, uh, the Crispin family and the Mitchell family. I keep saying how long we have known Doreen. I have known Doreen for over 60 years. Uh, we met in high school at Windsor High School in Jamaica. Uh, she was a year ahead of me, and, but she was very skeptical of me because I was a country girl. Uh, she was, yeah, I was a country girl. She was a city girl. <laughs> she, um, okay, as I stand before you today, I'm reminded of the profound impact that one individual can have on those around them. Doreen, my dear friend, for over 60 years, was not just a presence in my life, but a guiding light and someone who demonstrated the true meaning of friendship and love. Like I said, our journey began at Windsor High School in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, Doreen and I really met through another close friend, Lorna Charles, now Lorna Golden. We soon formed an inseparable trio. But somehow Doreen was still skeptical of me. Our friendship sealed. Uh, unannounced in high school, we always had uh, 
union, uniform inspection without the name. Doreen loved her hair. Her hair is always beautiful and well coiled. This morning in question and announce, Doreen came, I was, we were lined up by Grace. And I looked over at Doreen and like, her lips were a little smeared with some lipstick. So I touched my friend, I said, hmm, was she in and out last night for a while? Hair up. She, I mean, she just loved her hair. She had her hair up in a French roll. And the headmistress, they call at that time, no, they say principal. She was not too much of a pleasant person. And she walked around and she like circled Doreen and then she went there and saw the hair all pinned up. She pulled out every hairpin, okay? So what really, like I said, sealed our friendship is we went to lunch and I started laughing. Because <laughs> and she just started laughing with me. So it was Lorna, Doreen, and myself. They said I was the chachi chachi one, which is true. <laughs> Lorna was the firecracker. Doreen was the voice of reason, and her calm demeanor grounded us all. After graduation, we went our separate ways. We reunited. Fate would have it that we reunited, reunited in the United States. She, um, I think she migrated in 1968. I migrated in 1969. Okay, here's a friend, it's better than pocket money. And Doreen exemplified the true essence of friendship. She wasn't just there for the sunny days. She stood by us through life's storms. I will never forget the kindness she extended to my older sister, Lily, who is here, when she first came to the US, helping her to find a job with an employer who ended up sponsoring her and paving the way for success. Doreen embodied the virtues of a devoted Christian woman, a pillar of strength, for her family and the future. <laughs> and a pe <laughs> beacon of love for all who knew her. Her unwavering de dedication of Norris, her husband of over 55 years, her children, Althea, Nikki, Karen, Dexter, and her beloved mother, Teresa, speaks volume about the depth of her character. Doreen and her mom had a strong, special bond. I also had a close one. And they were always together from Jamaica to New York, to Tampa. So her children were blessed to grow up with a grandma who showed them with affection and who was like a second mother to them. Today, as we gather to bid farewell to Doreen, we mourn the irres irreplaceable void left in our lives. Yet, amidst our grief, let us also celebrate the joy that that she brought into our world, her laughter, her love, and her, and her unwavering friendship will forever remain her memory. Let's strive to emulate the kindness, compassion, and grace that defined Doreen's life. Though she may no longer walk with us, her spirit will live on in the counted countless lives she touched. Rest in peace, dear Doreen. You will be dearly missed forever.
just before my parents speak, uh, the choir members, if you would excuse yourself in the sanctuary and line up in the lobby to be ready to sing right after our last reflection. First Lady Doreen Gordon, a lady who lived among ladies, a tenant in a house of clay. Known to be a lady with class, a soldier, a true example of what the woman of God ought to be. Nothing short of class, act, memories, and mannerism. Some words appropriate to be used to describe her as follows. Classy, respectful, honest, trustworthy, loyal, never wavering in her faithfulness and duties. She lived exhibiting impeccable character traits. We are left behind to glean from the reservoir of first class qualities exhibited by Lady Gordon. Bishop Gordon, you stood tall in the midst of adversity. You are a gentleman, you're a scholar. Lady Doreen Gordon may have left this world, but her spirit lives on in every single one of us. The unforgettable memories that we share I will treasure them forever. Let us treasure the legacy. God bless you. Sister Gordon, names that fit this beautiful lady. Some called her Lady Gordon, some called her First Lady but I call her Sister Gordon. With great effort and emphasis placed on sister. There is no better friend like my Sister Gordon. My Sister Gordon was sincere, lady of integrity, strong, virgin, and rare. Sister Gordon always had my interest at heart. Loving, helpful, caring, kind-hearted, a good listener, and dependable. This list of character traits described her in is endless. During life's heights and lows, hurts, and happiness, I could always call on my sister. I am very happy to call her my sister for being my tower of strength. I appreciated her for the kind of person she was. It was a source of wisdom and encouragement. And that's the type of sister she was to me. Words of hope and confidence I want to leave with you. Looking back on text messages, as we kept in touch, Sister Gordon's words, one was, I am trusting God for keeping me in his hands, just walking by faith one day at a time. Another one says, God is good all the time. Number three, I am blessed and highly favored. Another one says, please continue to say I want to live with you. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. I will certainly miss my special and dear friend of great character, Sister Gordon.
Praise the Lord, everyone. Bishop, Pastor Dexter, family, friends. It's such an honor to stand here today to say something about my special lady, Lady Darian Gordon. I met this lady many years ago, and my first impression of her was like most of you, her classiness. She was so pristine and delicate, um, soft-spoken, like the scripture talks about that woman with a meek and gentle spirit, that woman I've been trying all my life to be, the meek and gentle spirit. I saw that in her, and I was impressed by that. I remember the first time I came, she was, I was invited here to minister in a women's conference. That was great in our house. We had a great time. Women got skills. Yes, I remember that. And I was so impressed with her. Treated me and cared for me. Grandma was there in the home. Made me feel special. And that is good. But there's also a time that I will never forget. And it's a time when I lost my daughter. It was a very difficult time. My daughter had just graduated medical school and three days before the graduation passed away. And I went to her graduation and sat behind her empty chair. And after that fell into a very dark spot. I received a call from Sister Court to come and to minister. It was not the call to minister that touched my heart. It was the fact that God used her to remind me that He had not forgotten me. Because you see, I didn't live next door. I lived four and a half hours drive away. And for her to remember me, I will always remember that. I also remember the vision of her that day when I looked in the crowd at my daughter's funeral was Bishop, her, and a group of women from this church. It didn't just stop there. After that, years after, years after, she would call to see how I was doing, how my granddaughter was doing, who was two and a half years old at the time, and how my son-in-law had doing. And that reminded me of which she did not forget. When you have a friend who can drive to visit you at your lowest point, remember you in your darkest moment, and allow God to use them to call you back into a place of wholeness and wellness, I cherish that memory. Family, my heart goes out to you today because I know you're lost, but I'm rejoicing on the other side. Because when I got the text, I got texts, I got phone calls, I got texts, I got phone calls, and I waited because I couldn't speak at the time, a day after, to call Pastor Dexter and to say, your mom made an impact on my life, and as a result of that, on my family's life, and she will always be remembered. Sister Dasa text said, my darling First Lady, Sister Doreen Gordon, is gone home to be with the Lord. That is what I held on to in the last couple of days. She's gone home to be with her Lord, the lover of her life. Let us celebrate her life today. A short woman. I wondered how this little petite woman could wear such oversized brooch, but that was her. Oversized brooch. I know you're wearing one. And that was her. She just was so classy, so outstanding. But that did not separate her from the love that she had in her heart for God and God's people. And she was a great testament of a virtuous woman. God bless you in Jesus' name.
I am Valerie Wilkerson. I am just one, just one of the many spiritual daughters of Her Grace, Lady Doreen Gordon. Lady Gordon was the epitome of grace, love, and a God-fearing servant. Lady Gordon knew how to minister in the Holy Spirit and how to enjoy life and live life to its fullest. A superb communicator. She had a beautiful sense of humor. She and Bishop attended formal gatherings with my husband and I, and she never disappoints, whether it was one-on-one, -on -one, group, or a crowd. She knew how to meet individuals at their level. Mother knew when to be stern and how to be gentle, tenderly coaching me to become my best in Christ. <clears throat> Lady Gordon was a sharp dresser. She would take a simple, modest dress and make it look elegant. She was classy. Whenever I was in her community, I would text and ask her if I could come over. Her response was always, yes, my doors are always open to you. Come, my love. When I arrived, the bishop answered the door and pointed me to her direction. Um, Lady Doreen would invite me for tea. We would sit and have tea with matching saucer and china cups. On my very, very first visit with her, I set a timer for 15 minutes so as not to overstay my welcome. As the timer went off, I prepared to leave and she looked at me strangely and said, but you haven't finished your tea. Then she said, you must finish your tea. So I discreetly clicked the timer again for 15 more minutes. We had beautiful quality time together. I knew even as my timer went off again, I was not okay until I finished my tea. Just a, a little time in her presence made such a difference in my life. She and Bishop Gordon connected instantly with my parents, Bishop Horace and Dorothy Smith of Tallahassee, Florida. It is said, once you have touched the heart, you, have, you are never forgotten. Lady Doreen touched not only the hearts of my parents, but also my sister, Pastor Sabrina Smith of Tampa, Florida, and, dip, and deeply touched the hearts of my husband and I. She deposited good in me, and I'm so much the better because of her. She loved me through a very dark and challenging season in my life. I have a lot more growing to do, yes I do, but I'm headed in the right direction because of Lady Doreen Gordon. She had a repentant spirit and a forgiving soul, always saying, I love you. I, deserve, I observed her set the standard for teaching the word of God and living the word of God. One thing's for certain, she loved her husband. Oh yes, she loved her husband, children, daughter, and son in loves and grandchildren. And I would like to thank the precious family, Bishop and your children. Thank you so much for your selflessness and sharing her with me and my family. Sleep on, Lady Doreen. Your presence I miss, your memory I treasure. Loving you always. Forgetting you never. This is a celebration of life. So if you love the Lord, say amen. amen. <clears throat> say it again. Amen. Well, this time, say it like you mean it. Amen. So I'm a little different by design. I don't have nothing scripted here. I just want to speak from my heart. And so from my heart, I say, when I first showed up, maybe seven, eight years ago, I got summons to the office by Bishop. When I sat down in Bishop's office, he put his hand on the table, pushed the glasses down, and he said, why are you here? <clears throat> we had been in the church for 16 years, and it was a time for change. It was a season of change for us, so I was, I was looking for new ground. For those who don't know, I'm not easily approachable. And um, I spent 20 years in the military, and so I was on a recon mission. And so, you know, Bishop is different by design. Bishop is a lot like me. And so when, when he called me in, I said, I, I like this guy right here, but I'm getting ready to work him because I understand he was the head, but it's the neck that turns the head. <laughs> and so I was looking for something special. I was looking for something different because... We were in a season in our lives where my wife needed someone that she could feel she could love on. 
and not that person not feel threatened by her action. And so I say, I'm going to work this well. So I began to formulate my plan. And I connected with Bishop, but I understood it was the neck that turns the head. And so eventually, we got my wife connected with Mother Gordon. Once she was connected with Mother Gordon, the rest was history. I had experienced initial pushback because we had been settled 20 years in the military. Every three or four, two or three years, we were moving. So we had been settled somewhere for 16 years. For my wife, it was uncomfortable. She did not want to go. But after spending time in the presence of Mother Doreen, she found out it's okay. We found the right place for us at this season in our life. And I'm so grateful we are here because for me, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> and so for me, when, when my greatest satisfaction was when they put me up to minister at the end of service, I'm always happy to see Bishop sitting there. Bishop and mother would be sitting right there. Made me feel special. But at the end of service, I only want to hear from one person at that time. I might text Bishop and Dexter afterwards thanking them, but I'm making a beeline to the car because I want to hear what mother had to say. I'm looking for one thing. You did well, son. <laughs> I say that because each and every one of you have been touched because she had the ability to make everybody feel special. And for that, I'm so grateful for you sharing her with us. Y'all be blessed.
this time we'll pause once again to honor the life of this outstanding matriarch with another segment of reflections in the following order. Beverly McLeish, Elder Leonard Heron, and we'll have a video tribute from the grandchildren, Karen Gordon and Althea Stewart. We're not doing well on time. So I ask you to please, please, please try to stick within the two minutes. Put your hands together as they come. Yep, there they are. Put, put your hands one more time together for the Lord. Amen. Two minutes. Hi, everyone. Um, my heart is broken. Aunt Doreen was an amazing woman and a woman of faith who has touched so many lives. I was privileged to get the opportunity before she passed to at least see her. Um, she has been a buddy to me and confidant. Her smile brightens your day. She always keep me connected to the family with pictures of great grand and weddings. I mean, you guys may not think I see it all, but I see it. <laughs> um, Aunt Doreen, will continue to spread your love, your joy for life, and just hold your memories dear. The Lord received an angel today. And um, Uncle Norris, Grandma, and the rest of the family, I'm going to stay within my two minutes. <laughs> um, the, your happy memories will give you peace, comfort, and strength during this difficult time. And believe me, I know it's difficult. Nikki will tell you how tense I was at times when we text. I just want to say, stay strong. God bless you all. Remember, I'm here. Reach out. And please, don't leave me out there. Nikki, you promise? OK. <laughs> Um, I just want to say God bless you all and just thanks for this opportunity to say something for my aunt. God bless you. Thank you. For standing here this morning heart is very heavy. I just remember it was just a few months. My wife was right there. But to God be the glory. About, not about, over a little over 18 years ago, my wife and I, we moved to Florida. We moved here, we came on the 2nd of July. On the following Sunday, we were at El Bethel. Shortly after, not long after, one evening, Pastor Bishop and Lady Doreen, they visit us at our house. And we had just a good time. We just talked. God bless them. And while we were there talking, and I remember she, Sister, Go uh, Sister God mentioned that Mother Isaac's and some of the ladies, elder ladies, they were cleaning the church. And I could not believe that mother was still cleaning the church. And I says, I will come over and I'll back around the church for them. Because I couldn't believe at that time she was still cleaning the church. So I came and I started to back around the church. And they would come in. It was about four of them. And they would be here every morning, every Tuesday morning. And they would have their choirs, and they would read their Bible, and they would get together. 
But not long after, they disappear. But Sister Gordon was always here every Tuesday when I'm here. And when most of the time when I'm here, Sister Gordon was here. And we just developed this friendship, a close friendship. I love Sister Gordon. I love Bishop. I love everybody. But I, there's a special love between Bishop and Sister Gordon. In fact, family don't get jealous. But I feel like I'm a part of that family. <laughs> because we have that very, very close relationship. Very, very close relationship. We would travel together. We would go out for dinner. We would travel. We'd go to convention. I remember one day Bishop called me and says, we are going to this convention. So, well, it sounds like he was going to pay my fear and everything. The guy just telling me we are going. <laughs> so we go to convention and we had this great day. We've been to more than one convention. We've been on cruises and everything. We just had a wonderful time in the Lord. But I have a little tiny confession. In, I think it was 71, no, I'm not 70, 21. We were, we wanted to go on a cruise. It was, it was my, we were, uh, Sister Harold and I were about to celebrate our 50th anniversary. And Sister Harold don't want to go without Sister Gordon. <laughs> and Bishop is protecting Sister Gordon. I don't want her to go. So Sister Gordon and Sister Lisette, she wanted, she says, a heron don't want to go without, and Sister Gordon wanted to go. So somebody called me, you know, said to me, tell Bishop, it's your 50th anniversary, and you would like him to be there. <laughs> so the friendship we have with Bishop, he says yes. So we went, and we had such a great time. We celebrate our 50th anniversary together. And that was Sister Gordon's, I think, last cruise. But thank God for that fellowship we had. Thank God for the friendship. This was a mighty woman of God. You talk about a hero. She's a hero in the Lord. She's an example for every one of us, God, that she was all children of God. She, loved she was a rock. She loved her tree of God. And I'm not going to say may her soul rest in peace. Her soul is resting in peace because she had labored for the Lord. God bless the family. Let us continue in love. Because one day we're all going to be with her if we follow the step that she took. May God bless you. And my favorite thing about Grammy um, was her thoughtfulness. She was always calling to check on me, and I knew that if something went wrong, um, that she would be the first person calling just to make sure that everything was okay. Um, she was so thoughtful. So one thing I loved about my Grammy was her laugh. She had a very infectious laugh. It was just, it filled the room in a sense. Like, it was just amazing. Um, and I love being able to laugh with her. Yeah, one thing I love is just how warm and welcoming she always was. I remember staying in her home back when I was 15 years old um, for a whole week, not realizing the impact that she would have on my life today. So I um, love Grammy so dearly for that. Yeah, we love her. Hey, everybody. CJ here. There's so much I can say about Grammy. I wrote it, put in a poem. Memories go old and memories fade. The memories of my grandma will never fade away. You were the rock that held us together so much knowledge and you'll live on forever for you i keep these moments near with your guidance my vision so clear 
You'll always be in my heart, and my love for you will never depart. One thing I'll never permit, your wisdom I'll never forget. I love you, Grammy, and I'll see you again one day. One of my favorite things about Grammy, even though there were so, so many things, is how much she cared. I think about every time I would go over to her house or give her a phone call, she would always ask me about how my day is going, how work is going, how life is going. She truly cared so, so much about the small details. She cared for her friends, her family, and you really could see that in everything that she did, and I loved her so much for it. When I think of Grammy, one of the first things that I think about is how she always showed up. I can't think of a single birthday or graduation or major life event that Grammy was not there for. She always made it a point to be there to celebrate her grandchildren. Two words come to mind when I think of my Grammy, faithful and consistent. I also can't think of two greater words to describe the love of Jesus. I'm so grateful that Grammy always displayed the love of Jesus. My favorite thing about Grammy was how strong she always was. She always displayed strength in the midst of trials and tribulations that she went through. And my favorite memory with Grammy would be sitting in her office, talking about life, talking about my problems. She always gave the best advice, and I don't believe that I would be the woman or wife I am today if it had not been for her wisdom and advice. We love you, Grammy. Love you, Grammy. So some of my favorite memories with Grammy come from back when I would say the summers with her, me and my brother. And um, one of my favorite ones is how every single night, me and her, and grandma would drink tightly black tea with um, condensed milk. And I just remember always looking forward to that part of my night. And um, it was such a nice moment to be able to bond with her. And to this day, I still drink tea almost every night. I'm sure so many of my cousins and other family members do as well because of her. So it allows me to think of her. What I love about Grammy is how loving and affecting she was every time we would see her because we live far and the love was always the same and how honest she was and funny she was. I love you, Grammy. One of the things that I love about Grammy is how supportive and caring she always was. One thing I love about Grammy is how caring she was towards me. And one favorite memory was when me and her used to watch Family Feud together all the time. I loved Grammy from the bottom of my heart. She was very important to me and to other people. It was very sad to see her have to go, but at least she's in a better place with a better person, which is God. And one of the best things about having Grammy here was always going over to her house which we would call um, Grammy's house. We never really call it Grampy's house. Um, but just going over there, saying hi, having fun, you know, like sleeping over there and other things. I love my Grammy because she was always really a hard work and way to keep everything connected. And um, it was also really nice getting to go over to her house, eat and connected with my family and just hanging out and just having fun and I was really glad and lucky that I got to have her memory of a Grammy. Um, my favorite thing is about Grammy, she buys me pizza and I, and I love you and she gives me all the like, hugs and kisses and I love you Grammy. I love you Grammy and I miss you so much. Mom, you are the goddess we strive to be. You taught us how to be God-fearing and trust in the Lord with all your heart. You were always there when we needed you. No matter where you were in the world, you would stop everything and show up for all of us. I remember the time when I was giving birth to your first grandchild, Queso, and you told the doctors, it's time to have this baby right now, and they definitely listened to you. <laughs> 
Your gentle voice is so soothing, telling me never give up. Always put your trust in God. Put your best foot forward. Buy it once and done, Karen. <laughs> no worry yourself. Leave it in God's hand. I'm going to miss hearing your voice and the support you gave all of us. Your absence leaves a void, yet I find solace knowing you're free from pain. Now when I look at the sun, I know you're rising with me. I feel the cool breeze on my face. I know you're giving me the kisses. When I feel the rain, you're showering me with love. When I see the trees swaying, I know you're saying hello. When I walk in the sand, I know your feet footprints walk with me. When I see the moonlight at night, I know you're resting with me forever and always in my heart. Please give Queso a hug for me. I love you, Mom. Keep soaring and shining bright like the diamond you are. Love you always and forever. You're number three, KG. The first thing that comes to mind when I think of my mom is the word legacy. I said some of this when I spoke on her 80th birthday. But legacy means the long lasting impact of a particular person's life. And I've heard that word said a lot here today. She didn't just talk about things, but she showed us how to do them. She did it by example. She gave us a legacy of not being afraid to step out in faith and take risks. She left Jamaica shortly after having or expecting or having her second child to move to the United States to create a better life for the rest of our family and not just for the children that she had but her unborn children and had she not been willing to do so we would not have the legacy that we currently have today there's not a lot of risk that we as her four children will not take because she has passed them down with that same spirit when we were young she learned to sew a gift that she had received from my grandmother, and she would sew my sisters and I matching outfits. Now, can you imagine how thrilled I was as the oldest child to have matching outfits with my little sisters? But that's what my mom did for us. And as an adult, I realized that maybe at that time there wasn't a lot of, of maybe finances to you know buy us beautiful dresses and things like that. But it, it never felt like that. It never felt like we lacked anything because Mommy did everything with love. She also gave us a legacy of being a giver, an encourager, a connector, and a lover of people. She, um, while we attended Calvary Tabernacle back in the 90s, she, had a, she was a, a ladies team leader. And at that time, the purpose of the ladies team was just to clean the church. But mom created community within that ladies team. She invited people over to her house. She, those ladies, we had Bible study there. I remember being in college and just having people um, over at our house. She opened up our home while we were growing up to so many people. Um, if you were coming from a different city, if you were coming from a different country, where there were seven of us that lived in the home, but it didn't matter to mom. She allowed us to be a, a, a family that was just open and giving to others as long as we can help. She was always big on family. She always found opportunities for us to spend time together. And today we in as a family, are big on family celebrations. There were times, and Nikki will remember this, when I'm not necessarily planning on hosting Thanksgiving or Christmas, but I get the phone call. So what's going to be on the menu for Thanksgiving this year? And I'm thinking, okay, I guess that means that I'm going to be hosting Thanksgiving. And then so we go to work on that menu. But she was, she worked at us being a close-knit family. As it's been mentioned, she found she loved new adventures. She loved traveling. She loved going places. She would take the time to organize all of this and invite her friends with us. And she would coerce dad into going places. Dad's not like super adventurous sometimes, but she would call me sometimes from whatever hotel. She's like, daddy just wants to stay in the hotel, but we're going to go and we're going to, she would create experiences for the two of them. She loved doing that. She gave us wonderful ma marriage advice, my sisters and I. 
As it's been mentioned, we found out that our husbands may be the head, but we are the neck that turns the head. And so we really appreciated that. She also taught us never to nag our husbands. If you needed something done, and you know, you may have mentioned it a couple of times and it still wasn't done, okay, you go ahead and you buy the paint and you quietly, you know, take out the ladder and maybe you start rearranging the furniture a little at a time and maybe somehow you would get his attention to have it done. She did it in a very meek and quiet way. There was never any yelling or anything like that. As it's been mentioned also that she was a fashionista. Um, today, I think a lot of us have shopping in our blood and dressing in our blood because of mom. She, I remember one time we had gone to Moffitt, we were leaving her transfusion. Dad had had, um, uh, we, he, he had gotten a new suit and mommy wasn't feeling so well. But she said, we have to go get dad a tie to match that suit. And here we went going because she cared about her husband. Even in her eight decades, it didn't matter. It wasn't like, I'm, I'm an old lady now. I'm just going to do whatever. No, she had to be uh, a wonderful, um, and, and we have that legacy. But the greatest legacy that she's given us is our spiritual legacy. I can say today that I'm third generation apostolic. I wasn't born into this. My grandmother got the Holy Ghost when she was in, in uh, Kingston, Jamaica, and then she brought it to the United States when she came. But mom showed us how to live, how to be a praying mother. She would say, she would jokingly say, they don't want me to hit my knees. And that taught us how to hit our knees in times of trouble. Throughout my life, I have desired to emulate my mom. Um, there's a, a picture I recently posted on Facebook of both of us in these bright yellow blouses. The, this backstory behind that is that we went to Spain the same summer, didn't travel together, but just happened to be there. She went to the store, bought the blouse. I went to the store separate time, bought the blouse, didn't know each other had the blouse, came back, wore it to camp meeting on the same night. I wanted to be like my mom. And it would take many days to share the impact. And I know so many have shared already the impact that she has on so many of you, friends, family, children, grandchildren. Um, but her legacy is going to live on in us. And I just want to say thank you for all of the text messages, all of the love that you have shown to our family. Um, I know that so many are praying for us, but I request that you don't just continue to pray for us. Continue to keep her memory alive. Don't be afraid to talk about her around us. We want to hear the memories. We want to hear how you have her how her life has impacted you, because that is what will keep it alive for us. She's never going to be forgotten. I know by the, the look of this church today that she is loved and cared for, and I just want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. This poem is called Legacy of Love. A wife, a mother, a Grammy too. This is the legacy we have from you. You taught us love and how to fight. You gave us strength, you gave us might. A stronger person would be hard to find, and in your heart, you were always kind. You fought for us in, all, in one way or another, not just as a wife, not just as a mother. For all of us, you gave your best, and now the time has come for you to rest. So go in peace. You've earned your sleep. Your love in our hearts, we eternally keep. Praise the Lord, everybody. For the sake of time, we will be skipping the resolutions, but we thank you for all those that have submitted a resolution, and we will ensure that the family gets that. Amen. Um, Doreen Dalvis Gordon was born on June 29, 1943, to Teresa Isaacs and Clifton Daly in St. Elizabeth, Jamaica. She is described by her mother as a happy child. 
who had many friends and was the joy of her life. When Doreen was young, she would often invite her friends to her home after school, and she was very kind and outgoing and enjoyed being around people. In 1959, Doreen graduated from Windsor High School in Kingston, Jamaica, and later attended Durham College where she studied bookkeeping. In 1965, Doreen met the love of her life, Norris Gordon, whom she later married in 1969. After immigrating to the United States and settling in Bronx, New York, Doreen continued to build her work portfolio as a bookkeeper for the prestigious silver company, William Adams, Inc. Doreen always had a hunger for God and believed in the power of prayer. One day while praying in her bedroom and seeking after God, she and her mother were filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. She was later baptized in Jesus' name while attending Rehoboth Pentecostal Church under the leadership of the late Bishop Morris. Doreen had two great loves in her life. She loved the Lord and she loved her family immensely. After moving their family to Tampa, Florida in 1975, Norris and Doreen continued to serve the Lord and worshiped at Calvary Tabernacle, which is now Tampa Life, under the leadership of Bishop Wolf. Ever faithful in ministry, Doreen taught home Bible studies, and we heard about those home Bible studies last night, and served in various areas in the church. Her professional career continued until the late 90s when she retired as a supervisor from the from Lawyer's Title Company, formerly Data Trace, in Tampa. In 1997, Doreen and Norris called, uh, answered the call of God and founded El Bethel Tabernacle, which is now El Bethel Church, in Clearmel City, Florida. As she did in her childhood, Doreen invited people into her home. And soon the church grew from five people in their living room to the vibrant congregation that it is today. While serving as First Lady of El Bethel Church, Doreen continued her love of teaching by leading home Bible studies, new member classes, and even ministered periodically in the services. And those that got a chance to hear those, those messages will not soon forget. She led the ladies' ministry of this church for many years and mentored many young ladies and new converts. Her love for people led her to pray with and see many receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Doreen loved to travel and experience new things. She spent many of her years exploring new continents and countries, along with her faithful companion and her loving friends. On March 14, 2024, Doreen took one more journey to be with the one whom she ultimately loved the most, her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. She was preceded in death by her brother, Rupert Daly, and grandson, Queso Gordon. She is survived by her husband of 54 years, Norris. Her children, her daughter, beautiful daughter Althea and her husband Kenneth Stewart, Nicolette, another beautiful daughter, and her husband Clifton Thornton, Karen Gordon, Dexter, and her favorite daughter, Sophia Gordon. <laughs> and I will add, honorable mention, her dog Maya, amen. Yeah. Um, her mother, Teresa Isaacs, who she loved. 14 grandchildren, three great-grandchildren, many nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. Praise the Lord. Grammy loved one song, and that's goodness of God. If you know that song, why don't you sing along with us? Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. Can you help me sing it today? For your mercy never fails me in all my days. I've been held in your hands. Why don't you lift your hands up all over the house? From the moment that I wake up until I lay. All together, sing all my life. You have been all my life. You have been faithful. Oh, 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 oh. In all my life, you have been so, so good. Every breath, every breath that I am made. I'm gonna sing. I will. 
Let's sing it to verse 2. And I love your voice. Come on, church, help me sing it. You have led me through the fire. And in darkest nights, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I will live in the goodness of God. Now come on, lift it up all over this house. Sing on. in New York. He's here and he's got a word from the Lord. Would you help me welcome him as he preaches the word of God today? Well, praise the Lord. You may be seated. I have a short message and it's still too long because my time has gone. However, God is good. God is awesome, God is wonderful, and I'll spare you the history. But I just want to say to Pops today and to the family, thank you. Thank you for taking me in. This is over 26 years. Thank you for taking me as the other son that many might not know. I love you dearly. Thank you, Hilda. And I could say so much more, but time would not allow. And I thought about that, and I said, well, after a million years, I still have time when we get over young. For there is coming a day when no more heartaches shall come. There'll be no more clouds up in the sky, and there'll be no more tears to dim the eye. But it's gonna be peace forever on that happy golden shore.
or the waiting event of the church is the resurrection of the dead in Christ. Death was never a part of God's agenda. Death is an enemy that invades the human race. And it came as a result of sin. Under God's government, death has no power. He is not a lover of death. Jesus celebrate not death, but he celebrate life. As a matter of fact, on his list, death will be the last enemy that he will defeat. Paul writing to the Corinthians church told them, for he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Jesus never celebrate death. He celebrate resurrection. He celebrate life. And as much as our heart is heavy today, as much as we are grieving, hey pops, and to all the families, we are not here to celebrate death. We celebrate life. Oh, I, I, I just have to skip through all of this. So please allow me. Mom, you're sleeping so sound. You can't even hear a word what we are saying. But I want you to know you have left hundreds, possible thousands of broken hearts. Husband, mother, children, grandchildren, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, friends, and a whole church. And the list just goes. We leave our hearts broken for a long time. But we have an assurance. And I am going to tell you in a short time, just as Paul did, just the way Paul said it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 57. Listen, this is the amplified version. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. For the, for the imperishable must close itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality then saying that is written will come to come through death has been swallowed up in victory we Oh, death is your victory. You have no victory. Where, oh, death is your sting. The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thank God the writer didn't stop there. He said, but thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we celebrate mom today. We celebrate death today and we have every reason to do so. Sister Gordon was not a fake. She was real. She lived what she preaches. She embraces the truth of the word of God. She was elegant. And the beauty of grace shines through her. 
you could not resist the perfume of the agape love for people that was shed in her heart by the Holy Ghost. She was full of life and strength. And now, this temporary life has come to its end. But in her, in this house of clay, dwells eternity that has no end. And in closing, yes, in closing, not really finished, but in closing. 1 John 5, verse 10 to 13 said it this way. Whosoever believes in the Son of God, accept his testimony. Whosoever does not believe God has made, out, or made him out to be a liar. Because they have not believed the testimony. God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whosoever has the son has life. has the son whosoever does not have the son of God does not have life and he went on to say I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life I say to death today, you have no power over mine. Because in this house of clay, live the Son of God. In this house of clay, live the power of the Holy Ghost. And those of you who make fun of the Holy Ghost, or make fun of Jesus Christ, I want to tell you it's real. The power of God is real. And it is the power of God when the trumpet sound. Hallelujah. Just like how Jesus rose from the dead. Hell could not hold him. The grave could not hold him. I don't care how many feet you put mom down today. When the trumpet sound. Because the sun lives in her, she's going to rise and she's going to have a new body. No sickness, no pain. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, for beloved. Now are we the sons of God? favorite song and it was one of mine and I'll just repeat the words of the, the verse the chorus says this house of flesh is but a prison bars of bones 
hold my soul. But the doors of clay are going to burst wide open. When the angel set my spirit free, I'll take my flight like a mighty eagle when the hills of home are calling me. The hills of home have called and nothing will hold this body down. Dad, I know it hurts. I know it hurts. For some of us, last year was my year. Three families in less than six months. It hurts, but I can't imagine losing the wife of a loved one who's been so close. Grandma, I know it hurts. And thank you. Thank you for serving. You'll be sitting right beside her around the throne. Hear me. This is just a house of clay. But one of these days, and I, I have a great idea. It's not long from now. <laughs> Folks walk up here and say, I want to see her again. Huh? If you really want to see her again, they better make sure that the Son of God who lives in her lives in you. Because that's what's going to allow you to see him. <laughs> Heaven is not just a place for everybody. Well, let me repeat. It's for everybody, but it's for a prepared people. And she has spent years preparing herself. And when it's all finished, he said, Come, well done. Come home. Come home. This house of clay is but a prison. Bars of bones, they hold my soul. But the doors of clay is going to burst wide open. When the angel said her spirit free, this house of clay, mother, it's just a prison. There's a soul that holds your soul. But the doors of clay is going to burst wide open. When the angel said, her spirit is going to spread her wings like a mighty eagle. Oh, dead, there is your sting. It's over. So let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's stand together. And I would love this crowd to shout. We don't hear hallelujah shout. At, this is not a funeral. This is a homegoing service. But we want to shout. Back in the days of the Old Testament, they didn't have walls by bombs and guns. Shout was a sign of victory. We have overcome. We have won. And so after two, as I hand this mic back, I would like you to lift your voice and give a shout to the Lord Jesus Christ, for he is good. Okay, shout hallelujah. Oh, no, no, that was just a practice. After two, one, two. in Jesus name we encourage you to do that as soon as possible can somebody put your hands together if you agree with me if you've never received the baptism 
of the Holy Ghost. Speaking with the, in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. We encourage you to do that as soon as possible. Can somebody put your hands together and give God praise for the Holy Ghost? And that's how you're going to be able to see mom again. Thank you, Pastor Bertram, for such a powerful word. It was not long, but it was strong. It was exactly what we needed for the moment. And we thank God for you. Well, we were supposed to be out of here somewhere between 1.15 and 1.30. And we did it. Within, we have three more minutes before we get to 1.15. We have to be out of here by 1.30. And um, so I thank everybody for cooperating, for staying within your time limits. For those who supported us, we appreciate all of you. Just got some uh, final thank yous. Um, allow me to convey acknowledgments on behalf of the family. We are very grateful and thankful for the outpouring of love and support from our brothers and sisters in Christ, our community, our family, and our friends. This has been a journey that we all walk through together, and the family appreciates you all. She was a pillar of selflessness and a steward, a servant of God. We are thankful, we, we are thankful that God blessed us with her. Thank you for being a part of that joy, and may God continue to bless us all. The family of Lady Doreen Gordon. Special thanks. The family would like to give special thanks to Sharp Events and Designs and the El Bethel Church Events team. Special thanks to the Wilson Funeral Home for your exceptional services and arrangements offered to the family during this very sensitive season. The interment for Mother Doreen Gordon will be Sunset M M Memorial Gardens, 1105 North US Highway 301, Thanasota, Florida. Did I say that right? I'm not. Thanasota, yes. Y'all yeah, gonna make me speak in tongues in this place. But... The repast will be held at the Winthrop Barn Theater, 11349 Bloomingdale Avenue, Riverview, Florida. 33578. And allow me just to read one more letter before we go. This letter is to Pastor Dexter Gordon, my friend. I observed you over the last few weeks as you look, as you took on the burden of ensuring mom had her, a first class transition. The way you cared for mom and dad, the way you put family first. I was privileged to see you and uh, to see mom as you made me see her FaceTime right the day before she passed away and you were in the room with her alone mom's last word to you was you are the pastor you have the heart of a pastor you have taken up the mantle and you wear it well with the help of the Lord you will take mom's vision to the next dimension by reaching more people with this apostolic message and growing the church, El Bethel Church. By staying true to this apostolic message, and I'm glad that she was able to see a part of it as you led this church. You are the pastor. As we celebrate her today, we know this, that she is also celebrating you, and she's celebrating all of her children, and her legacy lives on. We thank God for her life and Bishop, thank you for your leadership, for your vision, for giving young men like myself a chance. And my first place that I preached at was this church. Thank you, Bishop, for believing me, believing in me, and for believing in so many other young people. And you are a true man of God. We celebrate you today, sir. Thank God for you. All of this is because of your vision and because you stepped out on a word from the Lord. We thank God for you. We'll be praying for you. We'll be praying for the family, supporting you over the next uh, the few weeks, days, even years. We'll be here. What a great support this has been today. And I know that we'll continue to hold your hand up and to lift you up. You're going to be all right. We're going to take good care of you. We're going to take good care of you, Bishop. Let's put our hands together for this wonderful family. I come to the garden and long while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear it's falling on my heart.
just for a few moments. So please get to your cars as quick as you can or you'll be left by the processional. So please, we'll greet the family later. Everybody, please get to their cars so that we can join the processional. Thank you. And the ladies, thank you for getting the flowers. We get those loaded. We get a few more ladies that can help us carry some of these flowers out or some of the men. Thank you.